Guitar World's Acoustic Nation. My name is Lily Mace. I'm a New York City based session guitarist and teacher. I've been teaching professionally for over 15 years. I do a lot of things to make a living in New York. I play Telecaster in a few different country groups. I play the role of Slash in an all female Guns N' Roses tribute called The Rocket Queens. And I have an avant garde record with my own group, The Sweet Unraveling, coming out this fall. This is the fifth and final part of a five part series called Get Better Faster. Everything your teacher should have shown you, but probably didn't. So I'm sitting here with my student Maggie. Maggie's been studying with me for about a month, but she's been playing the guitar since she was eight years old. She's played in a bunch of bands, and she's actually a very knowledgeable guitarist. The point I'm making is that anyone can make progress with their playing and their technique, or they might have missed some spots along the way. So this series is designed to help you look at your playing and see if there's somewhere where you can take some of the extra stress out of your hand set things up so you can play better. That's why it's called Get Better Faster. The idea is that the less work you do, the easier things are, and the more you can enjoy playing what you already know. So with Maggie, we've been working on the idea of bar chords and organizing her bar chords so that she can move her hands efficiently without causing strain in her wrist. Wrist strain is a thing that I hear a lot about from people. They say, okay, I've got my fingers organized, I've got my thumb straight, everything looks great, why does my wrist hurt? So I'm about to show you guys why. First things first, let's do a really basic overview of how bar chords work. Bar chords are basically just the open chords that you know moved up the neck. So let's talk about how to do this in a way that you don't lose the relationship with the open chord. So Maggie, go ahead and play an E chord for me. Can I open E? Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. And you can see Maggie's made all of the adjustments we talked about earlier. Her thumb is straight, her fingers are on their tip, she's not grabbing onto the guitar. So this is setting your fingers up to be able to do a lot of things. One thing I want you to see is that this shape, one of the things that keeps the guitar in tune is the nut, the plastic, the bottom of the guitar. Exactly. So when we use open strings, basically this piece of plastic is functioning as our bar. Now if we want to move that shape up the neck, we need to bring that bar with us. So Maggie, I want you to refinger that chord so your first finger is free. Go ahead and play the E chord. Now, put your middle finger where your first finger was. Almost. Mm -hmm. Put your ring finger where your middle finger was. Here. Almost. Here. Put your pinky where your ring finger was. Right. So now you've got your first finger available so that it can act as a bar. But it's still the same shape chord. That's really important to understand that you actually already know bar chords, you just haven't figured out how to finger them yet. So let's go ahead and slide that up to the third fret. So what you see is that this is basically an E chord moved around with her first finger down. This is what we call an E form G, and we'll talk about that at a later date, what that means in terms of the music theory behind that. I want to talk a little bit about some of the details that go into what's going on, and then we'll talk about what's going on with Maggie's wrist. So, we talked before about my calluses being on the sides of my fingers. Similarly, I have a callus that runs along the length of my finger. It doesn't run along the middle of my finger. Now this is where students run into trouble with bar chords. They think, okay, because my finger is pushing down here like this, therefore when I make a bar, I need to take my first finger and mash it down over the chord and push down as hard as I possibly can, and then I've got to somehow get my other fingers over here, and then my hand's cramping up, I can't do it, I give up. So let's work with the guitar instead of against it. What I'm going to do is take my finger, and instead of mashing down this way, I'm going to roll my finger on its side. I'm going to use it to grab the fret. So now I'm able to make a bar without all of that awful work that I was doing before. So theoretically now, I should be able to place the other chord now. The other thing that's missing from the picture is what the finger is actually doing. So we put a lot of work into getting our fingers on their tips. This is not a situation where you want your first finger to be on its tip. We talked at the beginning of this series about the idea that the thumb is separate from the fingers. So even though we're bending the fingers, we can straighten the thumb. Now your fingers are also separate from your fingers. So you can bend three of your fingers and have one finger straight. So a very good way to work on this, we work so much on getting their fingers on their tips, is to actually just work on flexing your finger joints like this. So you want them, when you ask them to, to be able to drop into this shape. So you have control over your hands. You've got your fingertip, and you've got this guy here. So when I'm doing the bar, I'm actually doing a small version of this. But that doesn't mean that my finger's straight. My other fingers still stay curved, so there's some independence between this and that. 
What we see a lot in beginners is this, this idea that I have to make a bar and somehow keep my finger bent. So if you're having trouble with your bar chords, the thing you want to start with is relaxing the first joint of your first finger. Maggie's already got this under control because she's been playing for a long time. But the one thing that happens with her when she straightens her finger is that all, in order to curve her fingers, all of the stress goes into her wrist. So if you look, you can see that she's pushing down into her wrist. And I have a lot of students complain about bar cords being things that cause them pain in the top of their hand or makes them feel like they have carpal tunnel syndrome in this part of the wrist. Similar to what we were talking about with your fingertips, you don't need this part of your hand to play. That's your brain and a lot of other things that are used to using this part of your hand convincing you that it's necessary. So what we need to do is just reprogram your hand a bit. Go ahead and play that G chord again. Now what I want you to do is just think about pulling your wrist back. So already, and because Maggie's an experienced guitar, she's able to do that. Already, you can see that there's a lot less strain in the bottom of her wrist. My name is Lily Mace. Thanks again for listening. I hope these lessons were helpful to you as they've been helpful to me over the years. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. You can reach me through my website, lilymace.com. That's L-I-L-Y-M-A-A-S-E.com. I'm incredibly easy to reach. I keep up with people. This is what I do for a living. So it's my pleasure to talk to you if you have questions. Thanks again to Guitar World's Acoustic Nation for having me. We'll see you next time.